Let's give you a quick tour of this instant pot and I've had a few questions in from my community. I'm going to answer some of those along the way. Let's start with what's in the box and spoiler alert, this bit isn't going to take long. Spare ceiling ring, really handy. One of the first things to buy when you get an instant pot, make sure you have two ceiling rings, one that you might use for savory foods, because these rings can kind of take on the flavor and then that can be passed into food when you're doing desserts and stuff. But we've got one ring on the lid and we've got a spare. Nice touch instant pot. <coughs> trivet. Now this is just a removable trivet for using when you're pressure cooking or doing other kinds of cooking in there. Finally we've got a getting started guide pretty basic. There isn't a recipe book. Instant Pot asks us to go and download the app and also there are various e-recipe books that you can download from the Instant Pot website and that's it for what's in the box apart from the Instant Pot itself. So here it is, this is the Instant Pot Pro 5.7 litres, that's six quarts, and it's a different aesthetic to all of my other Instant Pot, and I rather like it. Now this is just a matter of personal taste, and you might say it doesn't really matter what it looks like, but you know, I'm all about having fun and feeling good in the kitchen, and if you like the look of your Instant Pot, well you know, it might give you a little smile, you might feel a little bit more positive about cooking, so if you like the the look of this one there's a little added bonus so if we've not met before I'm Susan and I've had a lot of instant pots over the years I'm a really big fan this is not a sponsored video I bought this out of my own money and I have a particular reason for buying it which I'll share with you later so now let's talk cost I've got the prices of the Instant Pot website today here in the UK. So we have got the Duo down for £89.99, the Duo Plus £129.99, the Duo Evo Plus £129.99 and this one, the Instant Pot Pro, this is the top of the range multi-cooker one, uh, £169.99. So a significant jump up, although I got mine on sale and it was only £129.99. So it's a fair jump up to this model and it's just kind of working out whether this is worth it for you and maybe especially if you're starting out on your Instant Pot journey, it might be better to try one of the lower cost models and see how you get on because they're all brilliant. But for now let's get on to the first question. So my first question came in from Cassia and Cassia asks how big this model is and that is a brilliant question because instant pots vary a lot and depending on the size of your kitchen, how high your cabinets are, it's really important to make sure you've got one where you can actually use it easily on your worktop. So here's the pro against my very first instant pot duo which I haven't had out for ages and it was kind of nice to see that little friendly red dial there. Um, so both of these are 5.7 litres six quart Instant Pots. They're very similar. The Instant Pot Pro may be a tiny bit bigger with this handle on the top, but otherwise very similar. The measurements from the Getting Started Guide are 33 centimetres by 32 by 33. The weight of this is 5.9 kilos and the Instant Pot Pro holds 5.7 litres. And if you've already got an Instant Pot, you'll know that you can't actually pressure cook with that amount of liquid. And if you look here inside the bowl, we have markings around the quarts and the litres. And you can see the maximum pressure cooker fill is more around the um, four quart area. So we would never fill it to the top with pressure cooking. So here's the Instant Pot Pro under my standard kind of kitchen cupboards. So my cupboards are at a height of the 45 centimetres but generally what most of us do is just pull it out a bit and then you've got room to, to put the lid on its stand and you can take out your bowl or do whatever you're doing and then put that lid back on again. It's a neat little thing, nice and handy, easily pushes backwards and forwards so I find this size is a really great size for everyday use. 
Now, for you fellow pressure cooking nerds out there, this one has two settings for pressure cooking, which is like most of the models. And the pressure cook low setting is from 5.8 to 7.2 PSI. And the high pressure cooking setting is 10.2 to 11.6 PSI. So that means this is a really great and powerful pressure cooker, but it can't be used as a pressure canner. So if you're interested in pressure canning, there is the Instant Pot Pro Plus model, which is available in the States and probably some other countries. It's not available here in the UK, though Instant Pot have been saying for a while now that it's gonna come out this year. So now I've bought this one, of course, it will probably come out immediately and I'll be wishing I could do that canning function. But for now, this one, not for pressure canning, but really good PSI levels for pressure cooking. Now on to question two from the community and this one is from Moto Matata. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. But anyway, they ask what is the difference between the Pro and the Crisp? And this is another good question because all of these different models and the way things are laid out on the website means it's super confusing, isn't it? So this Instant Pot Pro is just a multi-cooker and that means it hasn't got the extra air fryer lid so it hasn't got the functions that are associated with air frying. So that's the air frying function, the dehydrate, grill or broil. It doesn't have any of those air frying functions. What it does have is a whole load of other functions. So the models with the air fryer are the Duo Crisp and the Pro Crisp. And this one is just the Pro. Oh, I hope that helped. I think I might have made it worse. Now you regulars to the channel might be asking yourself, what has she done with her beloved Duo Crisp? I have set myself a big challenge that I'm gonna tell you about later. And that means no crisp for me for now. So it's all safely wrapped up and in our wardrobe for now, so I can't get my hands on it. Instant Pot Pro only for a little while. Okay, so let's take a look at its main function buttons and the control panel. And I'm just giving you a first impressions look today because I need to do a lot of testing and trying out the functions and seeing how they work before I can give it a review. So this model is called a 10 in one and there are a lot of presets and some additional features which I think I'm gonna really like, but probably not necessary for everyone. So before I go into a deeper dive on that, let's go on to question three. Um, this question, is from Matthew and it was about how tactile is this model as Matthew is blind and so buttons are really important. So the main buttons on the front of the model are kind of domed and they are tactile. You can press them and hopefully you can hear this. So they make a sound each time you press them as well as having a very definite press and their analog buttons. But something that might be problematic about this one is that it's got a lot of functions where it's a combination of the tactile button. I need to also be spinning a dial and going through various digital settings to get that set up and started. And it may be that the Duo or the Duo Plus might be better in terms of accessibility. I'm no expert, but you know, hopefully that helps. A good thing about this for all of of us is that the steam release button is like the Duo Evo Plus. You do your quick release with this button. So your hand is much further away from where the steam's coming out, which is there. It's also got this diffuser button, so the steam comes out a little bit slower. Like some of the other models, the Pro remembers your last setting. So it's really like you can change the presets, which a lot of people don't realize. So for example, I've already gone into this rice button. You can see it's got custom white rice, brown rice. So I've gone over to white rice and I have set it on pressure cook high, three minutes. And then there's this new feature on the Pro where you can set a reminder for five or 10 minutes or turn it off altogether so that when the pressure cooker finishes cooking for that three minutes, it will then go into natural release and then it will give me a beep at 10 minutes to remind me that the rice is done. And actually, I think that's gonna be super helpful. So we've got those presets to fiddle with and then there's a little more. So a unique feature of this model is that you've also got five favorite buttons across the front and these favorite buttons can be programmed up with your settings that you use all the time and I think I'm gonna love this feature and it should be great also for any of you who are like me and have a bit of a poor memory going on. 
So this is marketed as a 10 in one multi cooker. So let me read out what the functions are. It's a pressure cooker. You knew that already, right? It's also a slow cooker. It is a sous vide. It's a saute pan. Say a little bit more about that in a minute. It's a sterilizer. It's a yogurt maker. So it does have a yogurt button. And if you haven't got a yogurt button on yours, but you have got sous vide, take a look at the video I made on how to make yogurt in the instant pot without a yogurt button. It's really easy. And it's a food warmer and it's a steamer. And all of those functions are on the instant pot duo Evo plus model. But then there's another function on this one. There's a bake function. So the bake function can apparently be used for proving dough, which is fine, and also making the kind of baked cheesecake that we do under pressure in these. Well, I don't because I'm a terrible baker, but people do. And this cake bake setting talks about doing bread and things that aren't under pressure. Um, woo. And then it also has the capacity to use the quick cool attachment that you might have seen on the Duo Evo Plus. You fill it with ice cubes or freeze it. It goes on top of the pressure cooker, kind of equivalent to with a manual pressure cooker, a non-electric. You could run a cold tap over it to get it to depressure quickly. So that's doing the same thing in a safe way with an electric pressure cooker. Not sure I'd ever want one of those, but I don't know, maybe I will. Who knows, eh? And then there's one specific feature, which is my reason for getting the Pro. It may not be a killer feature for any of the rest of you, but let me tell you why I went for this model. So I've been getting the same question from a lot of people over the time I've been doing this channel. And that question is, if I buy the Instant Pot Duo Crisp, will that be good enough to act as my main air fryer? And my answer is always a version of this. I think that if you love air frying or you like to do a lot of that style of cooking, a standard alone air fryer with the draw style function that you can shake and get in and out very easily will always be better. So the air fryer on the Instapot Duo Crisp I absolutely love but what I really use it for is the duo style cooking that you will see in a lot of my recipes which is where I might be doing say some chicken and potatoes and I've got chicken thighs in there skin on and I pressure cook get a beautiful cook very quickly and then add the air fryer lid at the end to crisp them up. Same with ribs. So there's lots of my recipes where I just love adding that air fryer lid at the end and that's what I love the Duo Crisp for. But having got all of these questions an idea came into my head which is do we really need the air fryer lid? So here's my challenge. For the next two or three months, I'm putting away my Duo Crisp and I'm going to try out cooking with a combination of my Instant Pot Pro and my standalone air fryer, which is the Instant Pot Vortex, and then maybe using the oven. And this is why I've bought the Instant Pot Pro. So the inner pot on the Pro is like the Duo Evo Plus, actually, it has these silicon handles, which makes it really easy for getting in and out of the main unit it and also means it doesn't kind of spin when you're stirring and it's also got a flat bottom so better for searing and you can use it on the hob but here's the new thing that made my mind up this inner bowl is oven safe up to a temperature of 232 degrees centigrade and that is 450 Fahrenheit and I think this is going to open up some real possibilities for crisping without the crisp and I don't really know if some of my recipes will even be possible without the Instant Pot Duo Crisp but I'm going to give it a try and as soon as I've made my first video in this series it's going to be appearing right here so wish me luck. 